let's talk about how to find the right acting class for you. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. How do we find what we're looking for, Roxy? I, I don't know how to find the right acting class for me. It's tough. It's tough. I think that I could really use some help with this one and today. And we don't really know how to find what we're looking for, and that's probably why you haven't found it. Especially but, out here, there's like 5,000, yeah. thousand of them. And I just don't know how many acting classes Bono has actually looked for. None. And I actually don't know if that's why he wrote the song. Ooh. But I'm going to say he I did. I think I do know. I actually I was on the I phone know. with him yesterday. Oh, and, yeah? Yeah. And he was saying... Yeah, it's 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 either comedy improv class. It's either he doesn't know which which way to go. So hasn't found. He's he's got to figure it out. <laughs> he, he's got a lot of potential. He's a good kid. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Sean Whalen. I've been an actor for thirty years, many different genres, and because of my experience, I've been asked to do this show, uh, talking about acting and all the things that are important to acting with me is always miss phenomenal roxy stryer because of my lack of experience i've been asked to do this show <laughs> with sean whalen <laughs> and mr phenomenal our engineer and producer sean uh, i will Jeff say Graham. yes sir as you guys know on the green scale or mm -hmm. the least experienced scale. I'm the least experienced of everyone here, but I've highly considered taking an acting class. So not only am I producing you today, I am on the edge of my seat. Well, you will find these tips very helpful. I tried to make, break them down very usefully, but that's not all we're going to do today. I'm also going to talk about my week. We, we haven't really come up with our Sean's Week thing yet. We had, a, we ha we well, had an idea I, of one. There's a harmonizing thing there's a harmonizing in, in things the works. In the works. How about this week in Wayland? This week in Wayland. Your week in Wayland. It sounds your like a place. Wayland. Wayland land. Your yeah, week in, yeah, your week in Wayland. It seems like somewhere in Memphis, a small town that is starving and doesn't have a lot of money, and it try and it's called Wayland. And they said, "Hey, let's do this. Let's try to promote us as a tourist place." For some reason, when you say in this week in Wayland, I think of like yeah, 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 exactly. So it's that kind of now thing. we did it. Uh, so we're going to talk about my week. I had two auditions, and the theme is you never know. That's the theme. And then I'm going to talk about the tips on how to find the right acting class for you. And then I am going to talk about the gig that literally changed the course of my career. My life totally changed and started off the beginning of decades-long career. But as a side effect, I had a staple food that I could never eat for like three years couldn't even come near it what very strange but okay. i leave you with that okay. i leave you with that gotta keep listening to that yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you about the story this week so i had two auditions one i got last week and it was nine pages and on the breakdown they said we don't have a lot of money and this you know so don't negotiate and then they said nine pages so a lot of times that rubs me the wrong way it's like we don't have money to pay you, but we're going to make you work your butt off for this audition. Wait, so when you're auditioning, they say to you or they say to it's your, on your agent? It's on your agent, and then that's in the breakdown. It's in the actual breakdown. In the like, breakdown, it says, we don't have money? Well, they just say, this is all we're paying, so don't come in here and try to negotiate. Okay. They'll make it very clear. So it's a huh. little slap in the face ish if they say, you know, and then they give you nine pages. Because typically to read. you'll have a couple of pages. Yeah, a few pages to get the idea. Right. And again, you know, a guy like me have been around for 30 years. You can look at my reel and go, okay, we can do a couple scenes again. So I was a little annoyed. So a normal thing to do is when they do that, you'll go into these auditions and I'll say, we're just doing the first scene. There was three scenes. We're just doing the first scene. So I ask now with my experience, I'll just say, can you just make sure they want us to know all of it or do they you know say sometimes they'll say pick a scene so you can ask can i pick a scene and um just don't ask for more money right <laughs> right and they said no prepare it all and i thought okay wow it's okay as long as when you go in they don't say oh we're only doing the second scene do you know what i mean yeah so wait That's sean a, is this a pilot is this a feature this is a pilot for a lower budget 
streaming service. I can't, I'm not yeah, going to yeah, talk too much more. about it. Yeah, so, so... And you think it's a, that it's okay if they do that, but sometimes you feel like that they don't know how much of it they want you to do until they see you? A lot of times you. they'll say, hey, be familiar with some, but yeah, kind of, but a lot of times they do know. Okay. And you just want to clarify it if they do, because most people won't ask, but I have enough experience. And then another one I got was for a younger skewing show um it was a tv show that's already on the air and it was last minute they call me in and it seemed really fun they said we're going to bring you in we're going to play with the characters there's two characters who want to meld together on the show we're going to play with it then we'll bring in the producers and i said this is really interesting it's not like a normal audition i went in and i was the only person there you went in the first audition or the second audition this is the f the the one with the children's uh, the skewing one okay okay so so the uh let me clarify it because i'm being a little vague the long one is on tuesday this is monday i got a last minute one to come in and play and kind of workshop this character then they're going to do the producers and i probably get the gig right okay. they kind of inferred that was the deal so i went in i played around i had a lot of fun i wrote a lot of the stuff to merge the two characters together um we the casting director and I worked on all these things, and then they brought in a producer. I could tell that the one producer didn't really get what we were doing. Didn't get so what you were doing? Or? What, what the uh, casting director and I had come up with. And so they brought in another producer, and that producer was way more clear and gave me notes. And it was big adjustments, way different than what the casting director and I had worked on. And But I took them. And I did the direction really well. Immediately? Or you immediately. Had, okay. Immediately. I said, okay, I absolutely know what you're going for. Did it. Was very clear, fun, took the directions well, really great. They made me sit outside again. Each time they would let me sit outside while they discussed. And they say, thank you. And I was like, oh, this is great. And figured all that work I did for 45 minutes, literally workshopping the material and um, working with the producers that, you know, they would say, okay, so have them come in and do the part. And I actually never heard from them. And the next day, they, I call my agents. They said, yeah, they just decided to go a different direction. And so that was when I was really excited and thought it would be really fun. And what, wow, kind what, of they, wild. The, what they ended up doing was kind of, it felt like, felt like they used my talent of writing and workshopping and finding all the problems they were having with the character to do it. And then they went, oh, we're going to go another direction. But of course, they're going to use what they learned from that session. So that was a little tough. Do you get, uh, what do you do? You get mad at that? Do you get annoyed? Do you move right past you, it? You, you said you have to pull, what you, you always have to pull the positive. Well, hopefully they will say, you know what? He came in here and he did a lot of favors for us. Let's you know, use it find, for something else in the future. You, exactly. That's the only way you can do it, or else you'll just be furious. So if they called you in again, you would be weary or you would go in well if it was going to be that situation i think my my agent would say hmm, that's a little strange you know um but i've worked with this lady before she's a big fan the mic the casting director so you know you kind of have to let it go but that meant the only reason i wanted to work on that one is then i wouldn't have to work on the nine page one you know and go and i told my agent jokingly i said well isn't it terrible that you know i want to get booked this show so I don't have to worry about the nine page one that's insisting that they don't have any money. Yeah. So we were laughing about that. I was joking. So you wait until Monday night to work on the Tuesday nine page one? Yeah. Until after the Monday. Yeah, audition. exactly. Okay. So then I sit down and I start working on it and it's very well written. So that's one thing for actors to know. When the writing's good, it's easy to memorize because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything You're makes like, oh, sense. I would it say flows. That. I would say that it makes sense. It was great to work on. I worked on it during the day, and then I went in, and it was probably the best audition experience I've ever had. The woman was phenomenal. They had an actor in there to read with me, and so she said, I'm going to step out so you can actually rehearse with the actor. I've never had that yeah. in 30 years. So the casting she director left, left the, the room, room, and the actor and I got to rehearse the nine pages. Think they had hidden cameras? Uh, no. <laughs> But I killed it anyway. No, but and then I came in, and she was so blown away. It was so comfortable. And it was kind of one of those ones. It was one of those ones that I, I, we will talk about a wellness one where I didn't, and I've told you this before, I didn't eat enough, and I had a little coffee. So I just jittery. didn't feel, yeah, jittery. And I knew I wasn't nervous, nervous. I just was like, oh, I don't want to feel this way. 
But after doing the rehearsal and everything, it was great. So the point of all this is the Do one we know I was. You got it. Uh, no, no, no. It's we too early. Okay. It, well, it's a yeah. They're it's too early. It'll take a couple weeks because it's a it's a. But you killed it and you felt great about I it. I killed it. I felt great. There's no way this lady isn't going to work for me. Mentioned this show. She said I'm going to find it because I talked to her about my She's philosophy of, right of collaborating now. with the casting director. She loved everything I had to say. And it was just phenomenal. It was a great thing. So the point is, with this business, here I am excited to go in for the kids thing, thinking it's going to be fun, easy, book the job, and play, and be silly. And that one turned out to be a little bit, it felt kind of like a slap in the face that, you know, I did all this work and I get no acknowledgement for it. And then the one I dreaded turned out to be wonderful. So that's the point. You never know. That's kind of wild. You never know what's going to happen. So to invest foolishly like I did, emotion into what it is, is a kind of a waste of time because you just don't know. You don't know what it'll be. You just have to go in, do it, let it go. That's on another show, but if that makes sense. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think of that story, uh, Mr. Fantavius? I think it's really valuable. And I was thinking about too, I think your takeaway with that first audition to just be positive was really smart. Right. And I think too, one thing I've learned Obviously, I'm not an actor, but just producing and working in this business, kind of just settling with the thesis statement of this business isn't fair. We're never promised that it's going to be fair mm -hmm. has been really helpful for me just yeah. because I think especially relative to other industries, expecting fairness is going to set you up for failure. Oh, a yeah. Bit. Yeah. And, and as you get older, you realize, and I know friends in so many different industries, there's so many things that aren't fair. A lot of things in business just aren't fair, but you have to roll with it. Mm. That's that's kind of the way. You or have, not. Or not. Or get out. Yeah. Or get out. Yeah. Right. You have the the Buddhist choice, right? Mm -hmm. Accept it, change it, or remove yourself from it. Mm -hmm. And that's a little Buddha lesson for me to you. And another lesson that we're going to learn right now is Roxy has some stuff to tell us about After Buzz. Well, I just want to tell you guys that After Buzz really appreciates you, and we would love if you could give us your help. So here are some things that we're looking for right now. If you're on iTunes. Go to iTunes and rate, comment, subscribe. Rate, comment, subscribe. So what does that mean? Five stars only, right, Sean? That's right. Like, what's four stars anyway? Four, who, nobody really, needs four stars. Nobody needs it. Comment. So everything you guys write, we read. We want right. to know what you want us to talk about on the show. So if you write something there, we are going to read it, and we're going to try to implement it into our show. If you have questions, if you're an actor, if you're wondering if you should move out here or what to do once you do, then we're going to try to answer that. And then you want to make sure you subscribe. Of course, we've got tons of channels that you can subscribe to, whether it's reality or drama or sci-fi, fantasy, all of these things. We've got it here at After Buzz TV. You guys are the absolute best fans out there, and we really appreciate you tuning in to this show. We just want you to do a little rate, comment, subscribe situation so we know what you're thinking at and home. And the thumbs up. Yeah, and thumbs up if you're on YouTube. That's right. Because you wanted to see our pretty faces. Thank That's you. That's the only reason to be on we YouTube, We love you guys, right? and we want the love back. That's all. Just as actors, we need the, the we're, affirmation we're very, that we're loved. Very insecure. It's very true. <laughs> it's very true. All right, we have a lot to cover about how to pick the right yes, acting Yes, we do. Class. We really do, so we're going to dive in. And I know we love to joke and talk, but we can't, Roxy. we got to give this information. It's oh, useful. I already had so many jokes planned. I know. You probably had a whole shtick. Scratch and that I, one and out. And I, uh, I know Mr. Fantabulous had several bits. that. Oh, I'm he's gonna, been writing them down. Yeah, I yeah that. I'm going to have to Sorry. tell you. I'll show you, them after him. No bits today. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Firstly, if you listen to last week, getting started, trying to find a place to study. And by the way, people ask us all the time, yes, 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 you need to study acting. You do. It is a craft. You wouldn't go to a hospital and say, I want to be a surgeon. You wouldn't go to a trial and say, I want to be a lawyer. You must study. Same kind of thing. So we're going to break this down. Find a physical school that you can attend. First, you have to do, before you start looking for the actual school, you need to go over these very basic points. Your budget. How much money do you have to allocate to going to classes? And if you don't have that money, what do you have to do to get there? Little quick side story. When I started, um, I got into the Groundlings Theater in September. They said, start right away. I said, I don't have the money. They said, we will hold your place in this class till January. So I, from September to January, at my work, I worked double shifts because I knew Where I had to working? be a waiter. I was at Chin Chin in Brentwood. And I they love had the Chin -chin. takeout department. And you had to move into the waiter staff. You had to work in the takeout department 
for a while to really get to know the menu and the food. And so I work doubles, doubles, and oh, all so you're day not long. even making tips yet. You're not even a server yet. No, no. We uh, we made the takeout tips, yeah, yeah. which was nom- uh, nominal. That's right. Is that right? Phenomena. Do, no, do, no, no. Do, do, no. Do. See, a bit. You're <gasps> I'm killing it. I'm killing so, the bit. But I planned that one. I know. I so, it. Uh, so that so if you say okay, I can start acting classes, but I have to drive Uber or I have to pick do some overtime or get a side gig, or anything, anything to make sure you have the money for a little while to do that. Secondly, obviously, time. Do you have the mm-hmm. actual time? And do not think the time is oh the classes are two three hour classes a week six hours. No, it's the travel time there. And don't think that any acting class will say there's zero homework. Zero rehearsal. You know, they say get together with other actors in your class and do technique rehearsal. So try to add a few more hours to that. So let's say if there's a six-hour class, you might want to allocate 10, you know, just to travel and everything. Sean, when you say build up money, how much money are you talking about? That's what you're – you have to say how much money do I think I need. This is when you start researching. You'll know a little more. But at least most acting classes are – you know, a few hundred a month. Okay. So have that ready for yourself. So maybe like four to five hundred dollars. Four to five hundred extra a month to, okay. to study well. Um, there's ways to do it cheaper, and I'll discuss those a little bit further than further on. Location is it feasible for you to get to? Can you get there easily? You know, I'm in this part of town and class is this part of town, but I get it off at six and the class starts at six. So what do you do? Do Can you talk to your boss and go in earlier in the day so you can leave at 530? You know, make sure you can get there. Or if it is a situation like that and you know, hey, I work, but I will be coming to class every night, but I can't get there at 6. I'll get there at 615. Those are things you have to work out, but you obviously have to make sure that these basics, budget, time, and location are taken care of. And this is for physical. We'll go over online later as well. Now start your research in terms of how to find the right school for you. And the best way, number one way, is, guess? Mm, How to find the, auditing it. No, a referral, a personal referral from someone who you admire that is acting, any friend of a friend that you know that's in theater, Personal referrals are the best. And I think so we. Do you try to find your friends or family members or whatever that have similar personalities to you? Not or? necessarily. Or you can literally do a, a post on your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and say, hey, any, you know, they have a recommendations thing on Facebook. Anybody know a good acting class in town? I'm assuming that's more for if you're in Los Angeles or New York because. You can do that anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere they have these, you know, acting schools. And. If you have friends, that's the best way. So that's the best way. No referrals, right? You don't have any. You tried. There is none. Now you start doing your research. So number one, firstly, obviously, you're going to look for schools that fit your time and your budget and all the things that we talked about. So when you were saying how much, you look at the school. Here's my budget. Does it work? And then if not, you have to keep looking at different schools. Mm -hmm. Explore their websites, okay? Uh, look at the layout of the website, the information they give. If they do not have a website, do you think that's sketchy? Not necessarily. And that was a point I was just going to get to, uh, that it isn't the end-all be-all. Actors and acting teachers are not the most technically savvy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you can't judge it on that. It's a good place to start because obviously – If it is a good school with a lot of students, they probably have someone in charge of their media. And that's a good sign, but it's not the only sign. It's just a – if you didn't have a good one, I would say, like they say in dating, that's a yellow flag, but it's not a red red flag. Mm. What do you think about that, Mr. Fantabulous? I think it's brilliant. never heard it, but I'm definitely stealing it. Okay. My sister and I play a game called Red Flag or Deal Breaker. So this is this is no, a No, you have to add a yellow flag no, too. No, r- red flag doesn't mean you're 100% out. It just it's a red flag. So it puts this up a is flag. like this is like spinal tap 10 and 10 and 11 for me mm. because I just change instead of deal breaker and red flag, mine would be you're yellow red. flag and red flag. Yeah. Red flag's a deal. I'll tell my sister. Yellow but I think you could add a yellow yellow flag. Yellow red deal. Yeah. Mm. That's what I would say. All right. All right. Then you want to check on their website, how long has the school been in business? 
How long have they been around? Have they been around for a long time? And again, this is not a deal breaker if it's new, because we'll go further with other things to look for. But um, do they feature people who studied there? What's a long time? A long time, a good long time, a decent long time is at least at least five years, but hopefully 10 or longer, you know. But five years is good because that's, what do they say? Uh, Mr. Fontabulous, isn't it two years for most businesses that... To get in the that, green or to something? Get, to get successful. Most businesses have to last longer than two years. To work out the know? kinks. Yeah, to work out the kinks. So um, that's what you want to do for the actual school. Now the most important thing is to go deeper and you check out the teachers. Who works there? Find out who founded it, who they are. So the founder or who started it is important. Are they still part of the school? Are they not still part of the school? If they were, when did they start it? When, where did they come from? If this isn't on their website, what do you do? Do you call and request additional information? You can t right. You can call. That's a great question. You can call up and ask all of these questions of someone in the office or so the, they might leave a message machine and they'll call you back. You know, just call and have these things ready to ask. How long have they been teaching? And then to me, this is important to me, are they currently acting? I believe that this business... Or is who currently acting? The teacher? The teacher. That you're looking the, at studying Right. With. The teacher or the teachers they hire. So I work at Playhouse West... And Bob Carnegie started with Jeff Goldblum. Obviously, Jeff Goldblum works all the time. Bob Carnegie doesn't, but he studied directly with Sanford Meisner and Uta Hagen and a bunch of different people in New York, and he's been teaching for a long, long time. And then you look at if they haven't been teaching for a long time, who has come from them, and are they working? And the answer is Yes, at Playhouse West. So to go back a little bit, are they currently acting? And is any of the staff currently acting? And if you look at Playhouse West, the founder, Bob Carnegie, no. But the teachers, including myself, are. And you can IMDB us and see the current work that we're doing. We also have a bio page that says the things that we're doing. So I believe it's important only because it's a fluid business. It changes all the time. And if you're auditioning and if you're in the mix... Just like the story I told at the beginning of the show, it's useful. It's useful and current. What do you think about that, Mr. Fantabulous? I think it's really smart. Um, related to this, sometimes you'll see acting schools really peddling their alumni and being, Melissa McCarthy graduated from this school. This person studied here. Is that reliable or is that like thirsty? Uh, no, that's a, it's just a marketing tool. I don't as long as feel that person like it's actually thirsty. studied there. Yeah, as long as they actually studied there, that's all that matters. And you can usually find that out on Wiki or sometime. Usually Wiki would have where they studied a lot of times with actors. Um, so if they are not currently acting like Bob Carnegie, I said, who did they study with? And for nuts and bolts, I would say you want them to come from usually from the New York teachers that were famous in the 50s. Some sort of derivative from them, like specifically Stella Adler. Sanford Meisner, Bob Carnegie worked directly with Sanford Meisner, Playhouse West, Lee Strasberg, Uta Hagen, all the very famous New York acting teachers. A lot of people, if you follow their chain, you can see they end up, they all came from some of these five, six teachers in New York. It's Does really important. Does somebody's age matter? Not necessarily. Uh, I would say... The younger they are, the more suspect. Most acting teachers, I believe, are in their 30s, 40s and above. Because the old adage is it takes 20 years to become a good actor. And I used to, in my 20s in acting class, go, how dare you? I'm awesome. And now, 30 years later, I go, yeah, yeah. It's kind of true. It's the growth of technique with life experience. That's why. So... Age doesn't matter, but again, it's directly who they came from. My coach was mid-30s when I worked with him, but he literally had just come from New York three years ago and studied with all these acting schools and these people. So that's really good. But 
there are, once again, Howard Fine is a big, big acting coach, but he doesn't come directly from those New York people, but he has many, many famous people who worked with him. Um, Hilary Swank, he coached on her Academy Award Million Dollar Baby, Michael Clark Duncan for The Green Mile. He has a lot of people who worked with him. So again- Is it realistic that if you come out here, no referral, that you would be able to study with somebody like him, somebody who has coached these Oscar winners? He, yes. Um, you might have to do an interview, but it, so he's expensive. He had the money, you know, he's expensive. Is so, it the more money, the better the coach? Not necessarily. They don't have to line up. I am not. I believe I'm a really good coach, but I am also an actor, and I've always kept my rates at a reasonable place because I know beginning actors don't have a lot of money. And when I started, when you got jobs, you got paid a lot more money than you do these days. When you even get acting jobs, you don't want to, you're coaching to pay more than you would make if you got the actual gig. And so it's also, and we'll get to me as an example once we do the online. Again, you just look at my IMDb and my experience and things like that. So um, no, the answer is no, more money. Do they have good testimonials or references from the current and former students? And again, you can say, if that's not on their website, you can ask. They might say, hey, we can get you. We have a, we have a flyer here that has all these testimonials. But you want to get testimonials or also see, hopefully, they have people that are working that or studied there and went on to work. That's the other real important thing to look, like, look at on the website or through the school when you talk to them. So, so far, thoughts? It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of, it's a lot of checks to make sure that you are in the right class. But do, it's a very personal journey. So I feel like wouldn't you go through that same kind of steps like to find a therapist or a doctor 100%. or an eye doctor or something? Because you are being vulnerable with all those people I just mentioned, and you're being vulnerable in acting class. So how do you really want to know what, the, what it's like is to audit that's real important. Can you audit? Most good schools let you audit for free or or a nominal charge, 15 bucks, 25 bucks, which may not seem nominal to some, but if, if it's Compared a good to school, what it right, if it's a good school, 15 to 25 bucks. That being said, the number one warning I can give you is do not pay an exorbitant about a exorbitant amount of money. Say that three times fast. Exorbitant amount of money. Exorbitant amount of money. Exorbitant amount of money. See, that's not fair, Mr. Fantabulous. She's been doing this hosting thing for a long time. That's not fair. It's not fair. Actually. I'm not hosting. I'm acting as a host. Oh, I see. Mm. Ooh, you're good. Thank you so much. Exorbitant amount of money. That is a scam. There is no legitimate school that would ask you to pay a lot of money. For to, your first class. For, you, for, to for your join first the, to see. Yeah, for the first to see or in general. You can join our acting class if you sign up with our managers and use our photographer. And all that costs $2,000. You know, none of that. None of that is legitimate. They are not real schools. They should always let you audit. You should always be able to talk someone. If they're not, they're kind of these... I call them dream factories, where they just funnel the parent who thinks their kid's going to be the next star, soak them for money, and kick them out. Right. And they find out it's a scam, and it's not working in after two months. But it doesn't matter. They've got two months' worth of your money, and they've got 10 other people that they're going to keep soaking. So do not Is that the majority not, of places? No. No, it isn't. But it's definitely a, a lot, warning. Enough. Yeah, you just, yeah, you definitely have to keep an eye out for those places. Um, and especially if they're huge, 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 and have, you know, tons and like a tons and tons and tons of classes. And it's just designed to soak you for money. So be very, very wary of, wary of that. Then when you physically go in and you audit the class, you have to, it is like the doctor, it is like the therapist, it is like dating. You have to be open and feel the vibe of the place. Number one, the teacher. Is he being respectful to the students, he or she? Are they being um, motivational? 
maybe they are being tough, but in a good way, challenging you, not insulting you, demeaning you. Um, do you get a vibe that they're on a power trip and trying to put the people down? Are they trying to take care of the fact that they never made it in Hollywood and punish all these kids who are trying to? You know, you can sense these things. And if you get a bad vibe, then it's probably not going to work. Secondly, afterwards, you get to t usually you should be able to talk to that teacher about the class after you audit. Most teachers like Playhouse West, Bob Carnegie, will sit down with everyone who audited and have a discussion with them where they came from and what they're looking for. And then he tells them a little more about the class. Then also take note and look at the people that are there. The, uh, your peers? Your peers, Bobby? the other actors. Are they kissing the teacher's butt and trying to be, you know, the, their favorite? Are, is that bad? If the motivation is to have the teacher like them instead of making them better actor, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. It shouldn't be that a bunch of kids are there to feed the teacher's ego, tell them how great they are, and then he praises the people who do that and is hard on the people who don't. So, yeah, that's bad. So that's the other thing. You want to get a vibe of the place and say, hey, I could do this. What if you're unsure? I'm not really sure because acting is just so weird and so new for you. Then commit to a month. Just do it for a month. Pay one month. Most of these classes you and have to pay And most classes by the month. you can pay by the month. And so you go in there for one month, and if you don't like it, then you can look for another one if you're unsure. Or you could even try a couple classes and then, you know, say, can I prorate if I leave? And they might probably say no, but you'll pay a month's worth, and l at least you will know. What do you think about the, the – so that's all the breakdown for physically finding one in your area. Mr. Fantabulous, any thoughts or concerns on those? Yeah, I, the one question I had was, like, let's say for our listeners who are in Iowa or Nebraska or somewhere that's not close to a budding film and TV industry, mm -hmm. it's probably unlikely those actors would have active IMDBs, right? Those teachers, rather? Probably not. Yeah. So but no, actually, I will push back on that. Actually, a lot of people have that have relocated. Oh, you're saying currently. Yeah, if you're looking for current... Yeah, um, and there actually are some that live in different places, like uh, Jason London. Is that, you know that name, that actor? Uh, he lives outside of Memphis, and he still works. And But the they'll news. do a lot of self-tapes. It, it is a possibility, uh, Jeff. It is a possibility that they could still be working, but they're just up, Jeff, flying to see. different places. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, definitely. So it's a possibility, but... Unlikely. So if they don't and they're not active, then again, you do those other things. You look at who's worked for them and are they working? Did they study there for a while and then move to New York or L.A.? So that was my last question was, do they have to have at some point lived on the coast? They don't have to as long as they studied in a – they might have studied – stayed in the Midwest, but they keep um, – teaching students that do leave and do well doesn't mean they they could still do well locally as well they could be doing you know the local broadway productions that come through town every every few months as long as you can see the people that they worked with have made an impact somehow in theater or television does that make sense it definitely does thank you yeah and are independent and how about you miss phenomenal any questions how about, about me any questions i, I ask on as we go stuff? sean you I ask, ask as, as we go. go all right all right, so now you don't have any of that. So you want to do it online. So I talked about this last week. You can go up on websites and they have acting courses. Those to me seem like a little more of a risk. Only because. A more of a risk than what? More of a risk than actually working with a coach. In or in person or in a physical acting class or a Skype coach, which I'll go to next. It's just because you don't – it'll say a course, you know? And – but even those have quotes from people, you know, references from people. They might have ratings from people. Um, they're probably not going to show people who have taken their classes and gone on because it's not – it's not conducive to that on an online course. 
But I'm, I'm a little confused, John. So the online courses that I saw last week, like MIT has one, and they said it's three lectures, four PDFs that we send you for books, and do you know what I mean? And is it about theater or performance no, they're, or they're history? No, they're online. Cla- they say they're online acting classes, and they say there's people who will call and check in and see how you're doing. Um, it's pro- it obviously has to do a little more with theory. Um, so those are more general. So, so if you want to learn. If you want to learn and just get your feet wet about theater and film and TV production, you can take these courses. It's kind of a getting your feet wet. But I would recommend what I do, which is online acting teachers. There's a ton. And the ways you can do it is, like I said, lessons.com, takelessons.com. I am on Thumbtack. And the way you look for those are number one budget, obviously, timing when they're available to teach. Some say, I can only teach on weekends because I run an acting school. And you say, I only work on weekends. So obviously that's not going to be a fit. The budget, obviously. But the way you really look is look at their IMDb, see if they have anything, if that's important to you. I, like I said, I believe it is. Also, look at their referrals. Look at their... I have... I am a certified pro on Thumbtack because that means I respond quickly and professional and I've got the most pos- or some of the most positive reviews. I've got all five stars from all my clients. So what would be an example, Sean, of something you would do in a one-on-one Skype coaching? In a one-on-one Skype coaching, what I will do is we'll work on the basics of human interaction, behavior, kind of like a Meisner technique where we really get you out of your shell. I'll assign you homework. We'll discuss the homework. Do you do monologues? Do you do scene work? First, we do technique work for six to eight weeks to just break down what it means to be open emotionally, responsive to someone else, be able to be affected by things I'm saying to you and you saying to me. And you can do all that via Skype. And it's an ongoing thing. And it's an ongoing class, and then... Around six to eight weeks, we'll start doing scene work and start doing breaking down a scene. Then we'll do preparation, how to emotionally prepare for a scene. But all of these things I can do on Skype. And what's great is the more I get to know you, let's say the best example, I had a surfer, a woman who was a surfer. So I could speak her language. And I would say, just like getting on a surfboard, you don't analyze, oh, look, that wave is six inches. And that, you know, that's why you don't do that on a scene with every single word. You have to feel the vibe of the water. You have to see where it's going and move. So if you say to me, how are you, ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing? Fine. Uh, How are you doing? Great. So there's two different things, you know? Uh, I'm going to respond a different way, which means means you're going to respond in a different way. If I'm down and a bummer, then you're going to respond in a completely different way. And you have to be open to that. Because I might say, fine, but you don't believe me because of my behavior. So it's literally just getting the esoteric feel of the vibe of it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do to find an online coach is those basic things. Same, a lot of the same things you would do to look at teachers, but... You can also, what I do is you can take one class and I don't make you commit to anything. And do you think online coaching is as valuable or differently valuable than it's, a, it's differently as, valuable? As, it's, uh, it's a term. It's a term. It's as valuable as you can if you don't have an option. Uh, you know, uh, you could go to a class, but a class, maybe a three-hour class, and you might work for 15 minutes of that class. But you're also making because connections there are a lot of people. with people in the right, class. Right, you're networking. But if you can't do that, in adjunct to that, a coach is really good because they talk specifically to you. My f- specific thing was I was whining. I would whine, and I'd put my hands in my pockets, and my coach had to work with me on And that. they would be able to help you with right. specific auditions specific. or now, things One of my well. students, uh, Sheila, who... You should be listening to Sheila. Shout out to Sheila. Shout out to Sheila. And uh, Sheila, if you did hear this, tell Sean you were listening. And if you don't tell him, we'll know. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. Sheila's really good, but she's also very bright. And so she uses her brain a lot. And what I have to teach her in acting, we can't use our brain. We can't think our way out of a scene. We have to not think and be open emotionally. 
So I, because I know her, I can speak to her specifically. That's the best thing about a coach is they know you. You know, I know at this point, if you and I started coaching on a regular basis, I'd have a lot of information just because I know you, how to work with you better. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's really the ins and outs of how to find the right teacher for you physically or online. I have a quick question, Sean. Yes, sir. So I would have guessed that a coach and a class offer different. I know Roxy kind of asked this question, but right. if I'm in Oklahoma and I don't have access to maybe someone who's working in the industry right now, I would think Skyping with you every week would be much more valuable than attending a class somewhere that's not tied to the industry. Um, it depends on what you want. If you're just trying to get your feet, uh, feet wet to feel what it's like to get in front of people, work with people, then that has a value in itself, if that makes sense. That in that group setting, there is some value in that. But yeah, if you wanted to say, well, I want to get out to L.A. in two years, that's different. If you go, you know what, I want to see if I like acting at all, then that local theater would be good. Does that make sense? Yes, and I have one more question. That's yes, okay. sir. I'm just I'm thinking about this stuff because I might actually take a class. Um, are there any like really common red flags that you see? The one that you mentioned that I thought of is the bitter teacher yep. who takes it out on his students. Are there any other really common ones that you see? Uh, I just uh, – teachers who pontificate a lot and don't get the students working. Listen, in a three-hour class, a teacher might talk for a half an hour if it's about specific homework or something like that. But if they're talking more than half the class and talking about their stories or a great story and it's very self-centered, then that's a red flag, I would say. That you're that's actually what a podcast working. is for, not a class. Yes, yes. So I can, my big ego can be fed <laughs> by all of your thumbs up that you're going to do because Roxy told you. How many hours, because you said maybe six to ten if you're in class what about coaching usually if you're doing skype sessions how right. much homework will they have what that depends on the teacher um some some skype coaches and you'll know i guess another one uh, jeff uh, mr fontabius is that they just say you're doing great awesome and just feed your ego to make sure you're coming back next week I don't believe in that because you're not going to grow. If someone cut off a guy's leg in surgery and it was a mistake, they wouldn't go, well, you're awesome. You make a mistake. You want somebody who challenges you. You do not want somebody who's just a cheerleader. That's another red flag, Mr. Fontabla. Is, is right. it just someone who literally criticizes no one, makes no adjustments, and just says everybody's fantastic? And so how – but how long would you – Oh, for, I'm sorry. I, I got okay. off track a little That's bit. Okay. Sorry. So you were on the red flags. Uh, I was on the red flags. Maybe a deal breaker. Yep. So <laughs> no, it's a red flag. So what I would say is for me, I make you watch a movie a week and I make you... A specific one or any movie? I, I give specific movies. I also make you do observational homework where you take your notebook out and watch behavior from people. And then I also make you uh, read a little bit, and I'll actually have people turn into this podcast as homework. So for me, I give about five, six hours a week. So if you spend an hour with me and five hours a week, so it's like six hours for a week, each week. Cool. So that's me. That yeah. doesn't mean all people do that, but that's me. So that's the nuts and bolts of how to find the right school teacher if you have any questions as roxy said please please reach out to us and let us know so now i'm going to talk about the most seminal commercial in my life and you didn't know this but it's a commercial it was the milk commercial it was directed by michael bay so let's take a look at the milk commercial bring back memories it does. And that was the Vienna Wood Dancing D, one of my all-time favorites. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. It's a tough one. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? It's for you All right, iTunes let's listener. go to the phones and see His mouth is full of peanut, butter. of peanut butter. So he can't. Hello, for $10,000, who shot... Excuse me? I'm afraid your 
time is almost up. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, maybe next time. <laughs> Got Good milk. milk. Yes. So that was the seminal commercial that Spielberg saw, loved, and I got. Twister, never been. It was working with Michael Bay the first time you worked with a major, major He director. wasn't a major director yet. Wow. He is only a commercial director. And because of That's that so commercial, wild. he got his first movie deal. Wow. Because of this commercial. So it was, big so it was a big game changer for all of us. The fun of it was I went in, I auditioned. The audition was white peanut butter on a piece of bread, stuff it in your mouth, try to say Aaron Burr, and then they didn't have an ending. So they just said, just have fun, improvise, and see what happens. So apparently what they told me when I booked the commercials, there was a lot of people were throwing... Um, the phone down and screaming and tossing the table over and pounding and getting mad and that I was the only one who was so sad and looked at the phone as if you just lost ten thousand dollars no that my whole life was a joke it was all leading up to this moment and I couldn't deliver mm -hmm. so I was the only one so it gave it more of an arc a beginning middle and an end a sweeter ending as opposed to me just continually screaming and punching things and knocking things over. So that's why I booked it. And the other reason was I shoved so much peanut butter in my mouth. Also, people... During the audition? Oh, yeah. I crammed it in there. And they were laughing so hard because I guess no one else did. And I thought, well, my little skinny face, it's going to look funny if it's yeah. crammed full of peanut butter and bread. So that's another thing I did. And then when I got there... The set was gorgeous, as if you saw it or could see it, and if you can't look it up, but it's a beautiful set, great concept, really funny. The idea was the milk was falling in California. It was a California milk spot first, and they needed to have people grab it like they would a soda in 7-Eleven because the idea of milk sitting on a kitchen table was gone. And so people are grabbing drinks, but they're not grabbing milk. So they wanted to tie it to something you need. You need it with peanut butter sandwiches, cookies, cakes, things like that. And the Is, was this told to you? Yeah, I sat with the advertising agent. Before everything. before you were casting. while I was shooting. Oh, while you shooting. while I was shooting, and then I they said that I said, "Wow, this is really strange because most people this is before the musical didn't know about this duel or anything." And they said, "Well, the farmer in California said didn't know about this what didn't know about the duel about." Hamilton. Oh, um, oh, okay. They, you know, it wasn't that famous at the time. I mean, of course, if you were a historian, but they would never do that if it was a corporate Wall, uh, Wall Street kind of financial place. People would say, well, no one knows about that. Why would we do a commercial? Well, the California Milk Board was run by a farmer, and the farmer said, listen, it's up to you advertisers. You guys do whatever you think is creative. So that's a blessing that never happens in this business. There's always... No, you know, people marketing and scared and worried that we're going to not hit all the right audiences. And so they get to be completely creative. So that was another blessing that I got to walk into. And then they said, you know, give Michael Bay a hard time. He doesn't like people who are nervous around him. So he said something to me and I go, oh, yeah, OK, Supreme Director, I'm terrified of you. Whatever you say, I'm in your hands. And he laughed and he loved me the rest of the day. And then we just. Ah, that's a risky move. Yeah. But I figured, you know, I was on. The, but they're going to do fire me. They're yeah. not going to fire me. They're, no way. But what did he had say? What did he say to you that you I said? Okay, said it in a, But I said it in a way that was jokey. Just don't want anybody at home to take that as whoever your director is. Tell them, call them. Oh Supreme no, 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 director. no, no! I was literally told by people who had worked yeah. with him a lot, like give him give, a little bit of help. a hard time. Yes, I. Yes, thank you. Don't do that to every director. But if you hear <laughs> that, hey, this director loves. Uh, hockey, then you might go in there and start talking about hockey. They said he likes to bust balls with people. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did it. So then to film the commercial, I had Wranglers, each specific Wrangler. I had, so I would do a take with peanut butter in my mouth. Right after it was done, I would spit it out into a bucket. So I had a person that was the bucket Wrangler, spit out the peanut butter. Secondly, I would have a water person so like four people came running up to me water person i'd take the water 
and I would rinse it and spit it out in the bucket next. They would take the water. Then the third person would take a Q-tip, they would dip it in water, and I'd go make my mouth really big. I have huge gums, and I have horse teeth if you can't see me on YouTube. And they went around and made sure there was no peanut butter left. And then the next person gave me like a paper towel, and I would dry all that stuff out. And then the next person gave me my next peanut butter sandwich, and they'd all run away, and we'd do it again. How many takes do you remember? I mean, we were there for 12 hours. Wow. So I, that time, and the hardest part is when I'd shove a peanut butter sandwich in my mouth. And technical things happen all the time on sets. So there are tons in my mouth, and it would be about to start. And they would say, all right, ready? We're going to roll. Oh, hold on. Lighting has a problem. Hold on. And I'd be sitting there. Well, I'm a human, and my mouth works. And so... All of a sudden, it would start to break down the sandwich, even though I wasn't chewing it, and it would slowly start to like just ooze yeah. down my throat and break it down, and I would just be sitting here going. And sometimes, I think maybe once or something, I said, I got to spit this out and start again, because it just turned into this big, gross blob in my mouth. So that was so rough that I had the salt and the oil caused my lips to be just they were so dry and cracked and chapped uh and then i had like four canker sores in my mouth from the oil and salt like my mouth was in total pain and because of that and i loved peanut butter i used to eat peanut butter on a spoon as a kid i would just come home and i could not go near it for like three or four years oh my god not anywhere near it because it of that destroyed peanut butter it for destroyed you. Got milk destroyed peanut butter that's right but then people don't think of the hardships of, and and uh, of the and, aaron burr guy right and oddly enough i eat almond butter now i will eat peanut butter i do like peanut butter but it's funny i, I i'm never an almond butter fan as well yeah but the other part that was really crazy was it got shot and they rushed it out and it won the Clio Award like two within two weeks. Wow! It was crazy. As the be the funniest commercial of the year, it was all over TV. Twenty twenty did a little bit on it, and an old high school girlfriend of mine, a friend that was a woman, not a girlfriend, and then a friend of mine. They both called, and I said, oh, my God, you guys live so near each other. They're all high school friends. He goes, really? And he goes, yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, I should go say, you know, meet up with them. And they were kind of acquaintances in college. They hung out, and they've been married for, like, 25 years. So this commercial yep. made you stop eating peanut butter yep. and... Started a marriage. And, and started a marriage. Yes. Who knew? And more importantly, I was in an acting class and a woman who was in the class came up to me and said, your life is about to change. And I said, why? She goes, Steve, I work at Amblin Entertainment and Steven Spielberg loves your commercial. And a month later, I got into Twister and then I got into Men in Black because he executive produced both of those. He was friends with Tom Hanks. I did That Thing You Do. He's friends with Drew Barrymore. I did Never Been Kissed and Charlie's Angels. And I met all of those people and worked with all those people. And it started my theatrical career you know really revved up i was i was hot there was um breakdowns for commercials saying we want a sean whalen type my agent was saying, said hey we'll just have sean come in they go no no no, we don't want him we want a sean whalen type <laughs> that happened for like two or three years and <laughs> thank you, know you mr cool, fantabulous though, sean back to the beginning lesson you never know you never know. Going in for this audition with the yes. peanut butter, did you? Uh, you never, never know. Known. And here's and here's the other thing. I was open and having fun, and that that ending, I didn't plan it. I didn't know I was going to do that ending. It was just funny to me. So that's another whole lesson we'll talk about: being true to yourself and what's funny to you. And then it killed my commercial career because everyone thought I was the milk guy. And my commercial career ended, which terrified me because I had lived. You were too uh, visible at that point. I was too visible there, yeah. and saturated. And, but it started my theatrical career. And because of that, those, that 90s impact of all those movies I did in the 90s, now in the, what do we call these? They're not the 2000s. Aughts. Are we the, what are they called? 2010s. Mr. Fantabulous? I, 2010s? I agree with Rox. Okay. Thank the, you so, much. so in the 2010s, I wasn't undercutting you. 
I was just trying to get just some about it. Feels that way. <laughs> the twenty. She doesn't that, that sensitive as an actress. Good. Uh, so the twenty tens. Uh, those people who saw me as kids in the nineties are now making their own movies, and now I'm getting work again from those people. Wow. So wow. and the Magnum PI, which I talked about last week, was in that phase of heat. I worked on La Femme Nikita, and that's what that came from, and Jury Duty. So. It, you never know. And you never, never know. So that's our show for today. Thank you so much, Miss Phenomenal. Thank you so much, Mr. Funtabulous. Um, as always, thank you for letting me be part of your journey. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 